This week at the Internet Cafe, comics on the net. We'll show you the new art of digital comics. You'll meet loving Henry, a bug-eyed monster who's still a good husband. This is Jonan Vasquez, comic book artist and new cult hero on the web. We'll show you two great CD-ROMs, The Complete Mouse and Comic Book Confidential. And meet Dave. He not only serves up good cyber food, he's our guide to comic book websites. Plus, free software, Sega's Comics Zone, Microsoft's Comic Chat, and Where's Waldo? All coming up on our Cyber Blast. Comics on the Net, this week at the Internet Cafe. The Internet Cafe is made possible in part by Intel. One innovative idea always leads to another. Now there are connected CD-ROMs that link rich multimedia with related information on the Internet. The connected CD-ROMs, it's the Intel Pentium processor. Hi, and welcome to the Internet Cafe. I'm Stuart Chaffee, here as usual with Jane Wither, Andrew DeVries, and we're at CyberSmith in Palo Alto, in the heart of the Silicon Valley. And we're talking about comics on the web tonight. And I have to admit, this is a subject I know nothing about. I don't read the comics in the paper. I was not allowed to read comic books as a kid. Read a book, not comic books. So you're in charge. Well, my mom always says I was, uh, I learned to read, uh, reading Mad Magazine. Uh, I so did read Mad Magazine. Okay, so that, that's, oh, that's, now that's hear the truth. in college. That's yeah. something I like. But what I think is interesting now is um, you're seeing the comic book genre kind of move to a, a more of a, a serious lit and a graphic art kind yeah. of, a, of a mode. Um, I actually have a friend who publishes a, a line of books uh, based on very popular literary novels that are turned into graphic novels. They just did one, Paul Oster's City of Glass, yeah. which was a really popular new literature. And now it's in comic book form, so it is getting more popular. Ah, oh, the artist in the family. I'm afraid I like Spider-Man and Wonder Woman, <laughs> so it's as far as my uh, comic uh, literary talent go. But uh, I don't know. I think it's kind of neat. I do like checking the web every so often and checking the far side uh, websites. Dilbert. I think Dilbert and the other one. Yeah, exactly. So I, that's that's what I like it. I like it for. All right, comics on the web tonight at the Internet Cafe. Hey, Dave. Thanks. Thanks. No problem. Besides being uh, assistant manager here at Cybersmith, I've heard that you're also somewhat of an aficionado on comic books and comic websites. That's true. Where's a good place to start for people who are looking for more information on comics on the web? Well, a good general site to start with is uh, Jonah Wheelman's uh, comic book page. And uh, that's a good place to start because it has lots and lots of links um, to specific comic book sites. So um, you can jump off from there. Right, because there's kinds. so many um, sites out there that... Right. Uh, there's almost a site for every comic book. Okay, and great. plus, on that page, you can also chat online with other people. If you really want to get into the right. world of comic lovers. Now, it right. seems like in the last few years that, that comics have kind of grown up and that some of the, the, the kid type of comics are, are making way for more grown-up comic sites. And um, I'm wondering, you know, what, what do you like to check out now? Well, uh, it's true. I mean, as, as, a, as a kid, I was into things like DC comics, you know, the traditional ones. Superman, Spider-Man, Spider Batman. Right. Um, and DC has their own page. It's called DC Universe, okay. which is a great page. It has links to um, all those traditional ones, as, long as, as well as a few of uh, the newer ones. So DC has also gone into a bit of a more grown-up comic. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those comics that you like? Oh, uh, Spawn is one of my Spawn. favorites. Definitely. That's now, is Spawn a regular superhero, like a, like a cape and flying colors? Or? Definitely. He's one, of, he's one of the newer. He's not so new. He's about three years old, but he's definitely um, one of the more popular ones nowadays. Um, you know, he's got his own line of toys. He's got his own homepage um, done by the person who wrote Spawn, created Spawn. Oh, and they're actually like merchandising things on right. there as well, so you can right. buy Spawn T-shirts. Right. Things. Great. What What are some um, some other sites? I've seen some comics that are taking uh, a little more of a storyline, a little more literature mm -hmm. involved in, in, in what they're writing as well. Anything like that? Right. That really Those like? are more the comic books uh, I've gotten into as I grew older. Um, like the Preacher is the Preacher. a very good one. Um, it's definitely, I would classify as an adult comic. Now, is um, the preacher actually a preacher, or...? Um, he's, he's more of an adult character. He's not actually a preacher. Um, he's not actually a superhero, but, but he's definitely religion, a very cool guy. And does religion, religion play? comes up, plays in, in, some of the, uh, in some of the comics. And uh, he, he's definitely a very well-written comic, and he has some great lines. Um, what are so some other sites like that? Some other ones, um, Hellblazer has a, has a very good site. Um, not to be confused with Hellraiser. No, definitely not. And what is Hellblazer? Um, Hellblazer is uh, this guy. He's uh, like a 35-year-old 30 guy, regular guy, no superhero with a cape oh, okay. or anything like that. Basically, um, 
who uh, goes around saving the world, even though he doesn't really want to, but just there's no one else to. Right. And, uh, he's a very and cool he's guy. he's the guy to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I've also, um, uh, growing up and, and watching TV, there was, uh, you know, sort of unorthodox superheroes like the Swamp Thing. And, things, mm -hmm. and I've heard right. that there's a Swamp Thing site. Where, where can mm -hmm. I find it's that? It's actually called uh, The Bayou. Fitting. Very. And uh, you can find out anything you want to about the Swamp Thing. Um, some of the great things about some of these comic book sites is that you can actually find out things like about behind the scenes, about uh, the writers themselves. So and some uh, creators and writers actually have their own pages oh. So you can, you know, the thought process, what goes on behind right. looking mm -hmm. at the sites. I actually did see one site up there that had different color images where it was showing what the black and white pencil drawing looked like mm -hmm. and then it went, the stages it went through until it was... Uh, mm -hmm. The sites are definitely um, littered with images and pictures. Yeah. So, um, what do you think is next for comic books on the web? Uh, do you see this... Uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, interactive comic books. Really? Mm -hmm. So, where people can actually create the storylines themselves mm -hmm. and things it's already, like that? It's already uh, started on some, some of the pages, like the Sandman site. There are actually interactive stories that you can uh, follow along through the links and uh, create your own storyline. Huh. Interesting mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Bob. Take care, man. There goes our feline foe. She can't go too far. Stand by for battlefield intercept. <laughs> If we wiggle a finger, it's Fallsville! Alex, I gotta tell you, I just love the stuff you guys are doing. This is what you're calling digital comic books. You've really created a whole new category, something between a comic book and, and, and a TV cartoon. Just explain the concept of, of what, what you're trying to do with a digital comic book. Well, we're trying to make the tick or whoever be able to jump off the page, your computer, or jump off of your computer screen. Um, we want our products to come to life. Um, kind of like the television show, but it's a computer, so you can click on certain things. You can go backwards and forwards. You can make the hot spots. Well, well jump off the page was a good mistake you made, because that's really the experience. You think you're kind of reading a comic book. It looks like a comic book, right. but the darn thing is alive. I mean, let's talk about the tick for a minute. I mean, explain these things you can do with the digital tick that you can't do with, with, with certainly with a TV show or with a comic book. Well, we think that it probably adds a lot to the humor value of the tick. I mean, that's one of the strongest things about that title and that character and so with um, interactive we could do crazy hot spots um, you know and he does funny things or Arthur but I mean the simple things. stuff is you can click on a panel and something happens I mean it becomes oh, animated wait, wait, wait. every panel oh, yes. is interactive Clearly. somehow what if it doesn't go straight to the television what show which is we call the full motion you animation you it'll go to the hot spots or actually graphics I or something there so every panel yes has interactive and explain what you mean by hot spot a hot spot is like morphing where you click on something and it changes or uh, stuff happens. It's and it's really great because, I mean, sometimes people think cart you know, comic books are kind of dumb for kids in a way, but this is really, I mean, you explore, you discover stuff in here. I mean, you really get inside it. You don't just sort of sit back there and look at pictures. There's some folders, too, with, like, added plot clues, right. um, all kinds of neat stuff. You can go backwards and forwards. There's an autoplay. You can either turn it on or off. All right, so you're doing this with the tick, and you're doing it with, with DC Comics characters, right? With Superman, Batman, all those guys. Same idea. Now, you're taking the basic original animation and then just adding stuff to it? Um, sort of. We cut it up. We lay out a storyboard. We actually make that television show back into a comic book. Yeah. And then go from there, you know. Um, but we have storyboarders. It's fun. It's, we actually build a comic book. All right, now let's talk about Reflux, which is, I think, the first thing you guys did at, at Inverse. And that is really interesting. Explain again what you've done. What was the concept behind Reflux? Well, that was the world's first interactive comic book. Um, we went to China, got the rights for some kung fu movies, and built art around those. And so it's a set in the future. It's about a cyberpunk. And he's accused of killing his friends. It's friend, great stuff. You know. And again, you click on this panel that looks like a cartoon. Whoops, it morphs into a piece of video. Right. And that's one of the more fun things that we offer we can't do that on the internet or else we would be and when we can we will yeah and the other thing I mean this is a, a comic book in which you can read it if you will from three different points of view depending on what character right. is perspective you want to see yeah that was one of the neatest things about reflux is there's three views um, 
from Flux, from his friend, and I think from the computer. <laughs> and I've been looking at the tick a lot recently. <laughs> right. And you started from scratch there, so I mean you were able to build that kind of stuff we in. Had total complete freedom, which is something you don't have when you work with other companies um, and other t properties. Now, one another thing that's really cool you've done with these digital comics is the pricing. I mean, this stuff is under ten bucks for a CD-ROM. Right. We worked really hard to get the price down to nine ninety-nine in stores, and that's not easy. <laughs> At all. Really? I mean, can you make money doing this? Or? We're trying, especially, we're planning to sell a lot of them, so. Now, what's this going to do to traditional comic books? I mean, you look at an old-fashioned comic book, it's kind of boring compared to this <laughs> stuff now. Uh, well, yes, but Are you going to so put them out of business? No, I don't think so. The comic, uh, comic books have been around since 1939, Superman, and I don't think they're going to disappear. I think we're just going to be another option. If you have a computer and you like comics, check this out. All right, well, let's go check out Tick and then Reflux here. Excellent, thanks. Pretty sweet, eh? What are you doing? Raggedy Chippy! Now, now, now. There will be plenty of time for brain-eating after we conquer Earth. And to conquer said Earth, I will need an invincible army, a million superhuman soldiers marching to the tune of my big drum, which is why I shall clone the mighty blue tick. Clone the tick? Oh, yes. Your superhero friend is all the attributes I require. Incredible strength, nigh invulnerability, and a teeny tiny little brain. Big brain! <laughs> So, Kristen, tell me about Loving Henry. What's, what's all this about? Loving Henry is a comic book that uh, builds on the premise of 50s monster movies, where the housewife, the, uh, the June Cleaver type, realizes that her husband is an alien uh, from outer space, and she, she freaks out or whatever, but in this case, she decides, eh, so he's from outer space. He's a great, he's a good provider. You know? He loves me. He what can loves, I say? Right, it's, it's a right. Now, why did you decide to put it on the Internet? <coughs> um, because it would be fun. And because I hadn't seen a digital comic done elegantly enough yet, so I wanted to do it. I so to try how, it. how did you do it differently? Uh, most digital comic books have just taken the comic book metaphor, which is which is uh, space equals time. The further you are to the bottom right, the later it is in time. And, uh, sort of the process of going yeah. across the. Okay. And they've just taken that and put it on the computer. So rather scan than, it right in flat. Yeah, without trying to uh, adapt the metaphor to the medium. So I did cyberspace equals time. If you're looking at this panel, it's now. The next panel is later. So you just click it, and it shows yeah, you the, next, the next, panel, next panel, rather than having the square. So that's kind of an interesting concept. Are there some other uh, other comic books that have, have taken that a step farther? Are there any other implementations? Um, there's another comic called Brainbox Comics, which is similar to what I do, but rather than the one story with Loving Henry, it's you download a player called Brainbox. So you can't play it on the internet. You download the player. And then you download different stories that you plug into the player, like putting a video cassette in your video cassette recorder, and you, you go through them. So I can actually download a sequence of stories. I, yes. It wasn't just one story at all. So oh, that's kind of interesting. <coughs> what do you think? How do you think the internet, or, or you know, the World Wide Web, how is it impacting building comic books, for example? Um, the internet is mostly marketing right now. Okay. Uh, like in the case of Dilbert, a very popular comic strip, he gets several million visitors a week uh, read his strip on the web. And then they go and buy the books, and they go and read the newspaper. And so it, d it doesn't completely satisfy the need for the comic. You have to go and buy the books no, and get more. No, I think an important element of consumerism is the act of possessing something physical. So even if you see it on the web, even if you read it in its entirety, and you like it, you want to go own it. Right. And that's worked the same way for me. People read the comic and say, I want to own that, and they go buy my magazine. So it takes it a little step further. Yeah. So now I guess from my perspective, with, with the, you know, CD-ROMs and, and video games and all of those types of things, it almost seems to me that the person I perceive to be the big comic book reader is a, is a you know, guy, a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old that's reading either Mad Magazine or, you know, a, you know, Superman comics or what have you. And it seems that now I can have a video game and I can play, you know, put the headset on and play the video games and shoot them down and, and, and get that whole experience that way. Do you think <coughs> that that's going to replace the need for comic books? Very much in the States. Comic books have mostly been the Superman fantasy of beating up the bully and saving exactly. the girl, and video games are replacing them. Um, in Japan, that's not the case, but in most of Europe and the States, it's the young boy power fantasy. So why do you think Japan is different? Japan, their language is idiogrammatic rather than uh, phonetic, so their characters in their written language represent ideas rather than sounds, so the language of comics is almost identical to their written language. 
So it's a complimentary mm -hmm. so it, visual medium. It became, so comics are popular with adults in Japan, and they're not just stories, they're, they're college textbooks, and they're newspapers, and they're magazines, and they're read by everyone. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty in, in integrated in the whole culture. I think, you know, one of, from my perspective, one of the things about comic books is, is they're, they're great learning tools, especially for young children, mm -hmm. so that they can visually see these stories being told and they can start learning how to read and doing all those things. But um, this was a really great comic, and I hope that you're going to do a lot more. Thanks very much, Kristen. Thank you. On tonight's Cyber Blast, we're going to send you three really cool pieces of software. A demo version of Sega's Comics Zone game, Microsoft's Comic Chat, and a Where's Waldo game. This will be over 4 megabytes of data in the next 120 seconds. If you haven't seen these Cyber Blasts before, this is the actual computer data going through the TV signal and right into your computer. I'll explain a little bit later how you can set up your computer to receive the software. First of all, let's tell you what we're downloading to you right now. The file you see coming down now is Comic Zone from Sega. This is a cool game in which you battle the evil megalomaniac mutant Mortis inside the panels of a comic strip. You are Sketch, the good guy, and you have to defeat Mortis before he conquers the world. Next, we're sending you a demo of a new plugin for the Internet Explorer called Comic Chat. This is really cool. With the plugin, you type in text and conduct an online chat with someone else. Your words appear in a comic balloon associated with a cartoon character. Finally, we're sending you a Where's Waldo game for your computer. This is a demo version with the first three levels of the Where's Waldo CD-ROM game. Waldo's at the circus, and you've got to find him. It's a great game for kids. All three applications we're sending you total about 4.1 megabytes, and you're getting it all in under two minutes. Now, to do download these files this fast, you do need a TV modem. If you don't have one, you can still get these files from our website. Total download time will be about 30 minutes if you have a 28.8 modem, and about an hour if you're using a 14.4 modem. If you need information on how the TV modem works or how to set it up, you can also get that on our website. Just go to www.pctv.com and click on the Internet Cafe or Cyber Blast buttons. The download is just about finished, so have fun with your three new games. That wraps up this Cyber Blast on the Internet Cafe. I'm Giles Bateman. So we're here talking about comic books, and you've created a comic book that I think every uh, parent would love their kid to be reading called Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Where'd you come up with that title and, and the character, Johnny? Um, basically, I started doing the character in high school. It's about five years ago, basically just something to do other than pay attention in class. So, so doodling in class. Doodling in class. And now, uh, did you get caught ever by the teacher doing Johnny the Homicidal? Uh, first, I would always get my stuff taken away. The teacher would take the stuff away. But as, as time goes by, I began to you know, fine-tune my sense <laughs> of paying attention while I'm drawing so that when I do get caught, they would always ask me to repeat what they were saying just to, you know, make a fool of me in class. And I would always, I would pay attention as I was drawing so that when they did pick me out and ask me to repeat, I could. I could repeat what they were and, doing. And so now you have your revenge, and yeah. Johnny has gone from uh, classroom doodling to a full-blown comic book with, uh, how big a circulation does it have? It's up to 16,000 now. It originally began at 5,000, so it's so going up this time. So it's really a broad, a broad comic book. Yeah, it's about broads. And um, <laughs> it's good. It's, it's good. And now, um, uh, because you've gotten some fame and people know about you, I, I know you've told me that there's sites out there on the web that are um, starting to pay homage to, to, to Johnny the Homicidal uh, Maniac. And tell me what that feels like to you, to have people kind of um, praising you up on the web. Any sort of response is it's flattering. It's, it's nice to know that people took you know, time out of their days to... Uh, basically do some, devote something to my work. It's, it's an interesting feeling. Uh, uh, you showed me one of the sites, and, yeah. and to see uh, people um, basically doing sort of literary criticism about a comic book, and especially a comic book that has a lot of violence and things in it, what, what's your feeling on that? Are they, are they being accurate? Are they reading more into it, less into it? Well, the fact that they're capable of literary criticism, you know, automatically makes me okay with them. <laughs> so right. people, a, lot of, a lot of the response I get is just people saying, there ain't enough killing. You know, <laughs> don't write to me. So there's a lot more. Yeah, so, you know, there's pages that devote, you know, that much time in, in literary criticism, people reading things into it. It's interesting to see everyone's take on it. So people right. making biblical, biblical yeah. references. Yeah, yeah, you saw the one. Um, 
not that I intend for any of this stuff to be taken this way, but it's interesting to see how it is taken and how misguided people, these people really, are. yeah, really looking into it. Yeah. Now, the other thing is email. A lot of these sites have email links to your uh, your email and are sending you. What kind of stuff are you getting? Um, all just sex offers. <laughs> Perfect. But, yeah, that and uh, just generally the kind response, just people saying that I like your book, and I do, I do get things that go be, you know, beyond the realm of creepiness. Right, because I was going to say, your book has a lot of, of reference to violence and some creepy stuff. I mean, there's <laughs> murders and things like that, so yeah. what's your feeling? Well, I do get people just saying, no one ever writing said that I killed someone for you, but saying, people saying, I wish I were more like your character and that I could kill without getting caught and stuff like that. I'm Does sure that scare you? I'm sure most of these people are just kidding, but the ones that really get to you are the ones that are talking about how depressed they are, how, you know, how they considered suicide and stuff like that. I Do you get worried, feel responsible that possibly you could influence somebody one no, way or I another? No, I just get curious and say, kill yourself, and I just watch the news <laughs> to see if anyone you know, get, blames my book for it. But uh, I, usually, I usually don't respond. Is there a disclaimer at the beginning of your book? I just say, you know, stupid people, don't read this book. You know, <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not, I'm not responsible for it. It's, most of the people that read my book usually intelligent enough to know that it's humor. It really is just humor. But there are people who do take it too seriously. And there are people who get tattoos all over the bodies. So. <laughs> One minute, Lois. I want to get a magazine. Well, I'll go on up to the office. No, wait. I'm supposed to... Oh, don't worry, Todd. Mr. Miss couldn't possibly try anything in a crowded elevator. my floor. Oh no, not you, not again. Jane, what do you got there? Well, what I've got here is The Complete Mouse, which I, I don't know if you call the original book The Mouse, yeah. which was by Art Spiegelman. It was a story about the Holocaust, and it was actually his father's story of being a Holocaust survivor. And, and what Art did was create a, a comic book based upon the story mm -hmm. of the Holocaust. And the CD-ROM actually is, is the comic book, but a whole bunch more. There's a lot of the original sketches and the process that he went through as he, as he started to create this comic book. And there's a lot of video clips, uh, interviews with him, his father and himself. And what I thought was the most interesting part of it was his commentary at the end. So he actually talks about the process of his creating the comic book. Mm -hmm. Also, some of his commentary on uh, some of the critics of the book and their, their perspectives on it and also the differences between the perspectives in Germany versus in England versus in the United States and Japan so I found that um, actually made it much more real to me in understanding what that whole thing was about for him to create it so fairly serious topic but a really interesting concept in using the comic book um, media medium for telling a very serious story. Yeah we tend to think of comic books as the silly stuff and the Superman and the tech and that kind of thing yeah. but this is a very serious story in fact trying to deal with the seriousness of it by using in a way the light of, of comic book art. This is not quite as serious as what you talked about, obviously, but for anybody who's really serious about comic book at art and cartoons as an art form, this is a great CD-ROM from Voyager called Comic Book Confidential. It's got a 90-minute film documentary on there on the history of comic book art. It's got bios on over 120 comic book artists. It's got Art Spiegelman in there. It's got uh, William Gaines from Mad Magazine. It's got R. Crum and some of his great stuff from the 60s. It's got uh, more than 100 pages of great cartoon comic book art in here. So if you're really serious about comic book artistry, it's a wonderful CD-ROM. It's a lot of fun, a great thing from Voyager, so I would suggest it. What did we learn tonight about comic book art? Well, I thought it was really interesting to see an artist like Jonan Vasquez who created a, a comic book and, and is an artist and had no real intention of being on the internet and suddenly fan sites have sprung up everywhere. He's getting, you know, hundreds of emails a week from people that he had no so desire to So even when you don't publish to. on the net, you end up on the net. It seems that way right now. There's nothing you can do about it. Actually, it's funny because Kristen was telling me the same thing. She, I mean, it was just you know, sort of an accidental thing to get uh, the website and, and start, you know, doing some different things with the, with the comic book. And, you know, her whole career just took off by doing that one action. It was pretty mm -hmm. amazing. But what was interesting is, is that, you know, in talking to her, it, the comic book on the web is certainly not a replacement for the comic book itself. Her, her message was it's a great place to advertise, but really, yeah. the people, people want to buy the books, ultimately. Well, more than that, sobering thought, comic book art is art and graphics, yeah. and the web is still slow, and you're not going to see a lot of rich, colorful art on the web. What I really like, though, in terms of really wanting to buy the piece of paper, the guy I talked to from uh, Inverse Inc., 
this digital comic book idea is really cool. I mean, you can't do that on a piece of paper. This is really mm -hmm. using the technology, not the web, but multimedia, the CD-ROM mm -hmm. in this case, to just open up this whole experience of right. comic book art. I thought it was really cool. Although they do say that there may be some uh, interactive comic books coming in the near future on the web as well. So. Well, it's all coming in the future. Right. Anything's <laughs> possible. We'll see you next week here at the Internet Cafe. The Internet Cafe is made possible in part by Intel. One innovative idea always leads to another. Now there are connected CD-ROMs that link rich multimedia with related information on the Internet. The connected CD-ROMs, it's the Intel Pentium processor. Videotapes of the Internet Cafe are available for $24.95 each. To order your copy, call 1-800-916-PCTV. We'll help you stay on top of the rapidly changing world of computers and personal technology. Call today for your copy of this episode of the Internet Cafe or any of our other award-winning programs. When ordering, please ask for tapes by show number and title. That's 1-800-916-PCTV. Need a sulky over funky kind of...